Hi everyone, this is Barbara Beckman. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you a little art journal that I made out of junk mail. So I don't know about you guys, but I get a lot of junk mail here and the quality of the paper seems to be getting better and better and it's nice and thick and even though it's shiny, I can put some gesso on it so I'll be able to add some paints and some inks and other stuff like that. So I started to save the junk mail, put it aside, and um, until I had a pretty good good sized pile, which obviously didn't take too long because where I live, I just get consumed with so much of it. So here I am separating it and realizing I had some pretty good coupons, 30% off one purchase at CVS, but it was in my junk mail and I didn't use it. So anyway, I'm going to incorporate that into my book here and I'm going to make a rubbish journal and journals are expensive. So in my journals, I like to play with different items that I purchase. Um, a lot of times I get stuff clearance and I don't know how to use it. Like it'll be just some weird kind of acrylic paint with shimmery stuff in it and I'm not sure how it's going to react. So I like to play in my journals before I actually use that on any of my artwork. So I figured this would be a perfect journal to test out some new supplies on. So what I'm doing here is I went through and this particular one is a Jeep advertisement. It's um, from a dealership. My husband has a Jeep and they send us these really great flyers. So what I'm doing is I'm just, um, it opens up like an accordion kind of. So what I'm doing is just cutting off several of the pages except one I'm going to leave in its full size. And what I'm doing that for is the one that I leave the full size I'll bind that page into the book. So when you're going through the book when it's all binded together, this one will actually fold out and be like a little really cool surprise that was unexpected. Um, I like those. See here it's going to fold out and the part to the left where it says Jeep on it, that's going to be binded into the book. So once I have everything kind of organized and size, pretty much size um, piles that are all the same, I start to pick out two that are the largest because I know that that's the, the cover of my book has to be a little bit bigger than that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tracing around the largest of the advertisements and that's going to be um, for my cover and my back cover. And I just use a postal box that came in the mail. I like to recycle things. I don't really like to throw anything out. If I can recycle them for another purpose, um, I'm totally all about that. So this box came in handy. And I have a T-square here, but the box is really not squared. So what I ended up doing is just taking a little ruler and I'm marking a half an inch around all the sides, except um, the actual where the book's going to be opening, the end of the book, not the part that's going to be binded, the other side. So in other words, I want it longer than the actual pages. So it's a half inch wider than they're going to be, than the pages are going to be. And it's a good inch longer than the longest um, advertisement is. I hope that makes sense. That's a big tongue twister there. Um, so once I have that marked out, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll make some other marks on it here. So it's just going to be a back and a front, same size, and just a little bit bigger than my actual pages, if that makes any sense. So what I'm doing is I'm going to um, gesso these, and I use basic um, gesso by Liquitex, and I, I like this brand, but you can use anything you have. Um, why I'm doing this is just to create a little bit more stability to my pages or to my, my covers. It's just going to help harden it up a little bit. And I did a coat on each side, the back and the front, and I also do the sides here just so everything had a nice white edge and you couldn't see any of that cardboard covering. Although I'm going to be covering it a little bit later on when this dries with paper or tissue paper, um, I still liked, liked having the gesso there. So what I'm doing is, uh, if you notice to the left, I'm putting like little marks of, of paint like that. <laughs> it's just because there's chunks of some dried gesso from the top that must have gotten in there. So I just plop it off to the side because you don't want any big chunky things drying in there. So here I am doing the back of it. And um, I love gesso. It just kind of makes it feel good, too. Once it's dry, it gives you a nice foundation to add your inks and other, other things onto it. I already knew before I started this, I had some really wonderful tissue paper that I got in the clearance section in a roll. And it uh, had musical notes on it, and it had, like, some writing, which I totally couldn't see and figure out what it said anyway. But that's okay. I just wanted it to look like some old-fashioned, hand-scripted writing. So... That's what I, cho I chose to use to cover the book. Even though I knew I was going to come along and do a lot of painting and stamping 
and just fun things on top of it. Um, I used a lot of stencils, a lot of different inks. I still could see, um, in person, you can definitely see all the the writing and the notes of the musical notes coming through. I don't think you can really see it too great if you took, you know, through the picture that I'm showing, but um, in person you can definitely see a lot of that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just determining where my holes are going to be. So I'm going to determine them by using just a regular piece of copy paper, which I cut out to be the same size as the largest of the advertisements. And I folded that in half so I'd have a middle and then I folded that in half again. And then I'll go ahead and do it once again. So every time you fold it, it gets thicker and harder to get a nice crease. So I'll just use a bone folder to help me secure and push down those edges. So it's, it's um, you know, quite stiff there. It'll, it'll just keep it in place. So I do this so I can mark my holes out. So I'm using a um, Japanese stamp binding book technique to make this book. And the most common use is a four hole one. Um, it's very simple book binding. Uh, I don't know, it's been around forever. I have learned how to do this when I was a little girl. I didn't really know what it was called, but I've made several books along the way from different things. I've used um, brown uh, lunch bags, I've used cardstock, and here now I'm using some junk mail. And I use uh, anything that really would make a really cool book. You can use um, if you want a thinner book, you can use deli paper. That's what I just, I use a lot of um, jelly printing on. So I've made books with that as well. So you can really make a book out of anything. So once you open it up, you have, it kind of looks like an accordion. And I'm just going to go ahead and mark where my four holes are going to be, my four dots. So I kind of evenly space them out. And um, that's going to be my template. So I have it all that I have here and um, it's very sharp and pointy and I, I use it to pierce through the papers to make an indent into the advertisements. And that's just going to give me kind of like an eyeball of where they're going to go. So here I am just figuring out where my four best placements are going to be. So this paper again is the size of my largest advertisement. And some of them are going to be smaller and some of them are going to be, um, you know, the same exact size. So the ones that are smaller, I just kind of place them in the middle of the stack and make sure that I'm getting all four holes on them. Now, if four holes don't line up and it's just a little too close to the edge, I will just move it um, to where at least three holes will be in position where they all have a good chance to catch onto the binding. So I just push down here, just like I said, to make an indent so I know where they're going to go. So I come across uh, a little bit later and you'll see me make these a little bit larger and I'll use a hole punch for that. So I'm going to list everything that I use um, at the bottom of this video, but this is a junk journal and I'm all about recycling too and using what you have. Um, my videos, yes, I am an affiliate of Amazon and Dick Blick and a bunch of different things. and. Um, but I also want to encourage you to use what you have at home. I mean, that's what I do. And I look around and sometimes, you know, things might not necessarily go together. I make sure that I try and see what they do together. Sometimes two materials or two mediums will fight each other. And I kind of like that challenge. And this is what I like to do in my art journals. I like to kind of um, take a risk or walk on the edge per se. It's just my personality. I like to make things work. And I, I grew up um, not having a lot, and um, I lived in a very, very wealthy community uh, along the Hudson River. I was very fortunate just outside of Manhattan, and it was beautiful, very, very expensive to live there. But my family um, came from Ireland in the 1800s, and these houses in the actual towns are purchased from way back then when they did not cost so much. And they're passed down from generation to generation to the next um family members. So that's why we lived in this beautiful rich town, but I certainly did not have the money that outside town people had. So I had to be very creative with what I used. I didn't have a lot of money and there was no art stores like next to me. I didn't have a lot of paint. I did get paint from the school district when I got a little older and I was very grateful for that. I remember getting Liquitex acrylic paint and thinking that you know the world was just wonderful because I never owned paint before So growing up though, I did use whatever was available to me laying around the house So 
um, that's what I encourage you to do. I think you you find um, you can be very, very creative. And in the end, you really, you know, shock yourself with what you have done and learned on your own. So let me get back to the video here. Um, I just use binder clips from the dollar store. They work great. I hold them together. And since it's Lent and um, I am Catholic, I decided to make this like a Lent book, like a Lenten journey book. So Lent is 40 days. And I figured for the next 40 days, I was going to um, put something inside the book that would be my Lenten journey or to something to inspire me. Now, usually during Lent, you give up something and you're not supposed to tell people, you know, what it is. I mean, years ago, people would be like, oh, I'm dying for a piece of chocolate or I can't eat sweets. I wasn't raised that way. I was raised to be very humble and not tell anybody. And you just do your Lenten journey on your own. And instead of doing things like giving up things, you don't have to do that. You can also give back to the community or help somebody or do something good for somebody else. So my Lenten journey is different every year and sometimes I like to remember it and this is how I remember it. So this year I'm making a 40 day Lenten journey junk mail book. Boy, that's a lot of words. But yeah, that's that's what I started out to do and that's why I used it for this particular purpose. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting down my template and I'm punching or piercing holes through them. You can kind of see them, they're not really deep. This is definitely not gonna go through all 40 of the holes here. But I'm just going through at least three or four of them. And I'll take the binder clips off in a few minutes and then I will do the same thing with the rest of the papers. But you will see coming up in a little bit, I will go back and I'll use the punch and I'll make bigger holes. Now on the outside covers, I did decide to use little grommets and um, I have made, took all black ones and made them a little decorative with using the black grommets. And I used them on the back and the front covers. Now I did not use them on the inside covers, but I, or inside pages but I did make those holes a little bit larger because it's just a little bit easier to thread. So here, let me talk about my thread. So if you don't have a lot of materials, I mean, you wouldn't not use um, thread or something that you would be quilting with or say, you know, sewing or patching your clothing. It's a pretty thick thread that I'm using. Um, it used to be, like I used to use it for tatting when I was a little girl. I had two elderly aunts who taught me how to tat, so it's pretty thick thread, um, but it's a wax thread. I use a waxed linen thread, and I do get mine on Amazon, although um, if you don't have waxed thread, you can just simply take a candle, and you can wax your own thread, so I'll talk about that in a minute. I just want to tell you here what I'm doing, so once my gessoed covers were dry, I went ahead and I took this tissue paper like I was talking about earlier and it has the musical notes on it and some of the writing. And I'm just using Liquitex Matte Medium as my glue. I find it's the best, it is my favorite. You could certainly use Mod Podge, you could use you know, watered down Elmer's glue just so it wouldn't be so thick. Um, but you, this is definitely my favorite. Again, I, I link everything below so you know what I'm using. So this takes the, the paper nicely. And if you notice, there's a crease going down here to uh, where my brush is right about now to the left left side here. That was just like a crease that was in the box. So it was a little bit flimsy there, but when I use the gesso and when I go ahead and decoupage um, some scrapbook papers, some thicker scrapbook papers, and what I did was I, I decided to use a watercolor paper um, underneath there because it's pretty thick. It's a pretty, I think it was 140 pound cold pressed paper. So it was a nice thick watercolor paper and I glued that down, which is coming up. Um, and that gave me a little bit more stability in my covers. Okay. So as I do this, I'm always sure to go back because now I've covered my holes, right? You can't really see them except you can see them from one side. It's a little hard to see that in the video, but so the side that I covered, obviously I can't see. So I go ahead to the part where I can see and I just pierce my holes back in again. So I would be going through that tissue paper. So I constantly do that so I don't lose those holes. Now those holes are gonna get bigger, like I said, cause I'm gonna put um, some grommets in there. So here's the watercolor paper that I cut out and I cut it out the same exact size, but I don't keep it the same size. I just do that so I can get a rough idea going down. I do lay it on top of it. And what I'll do is I'll just eyeball it with my eye and I'll take a pencil and I'll just mark a tiny bit where I'm going to cut off. 
So this way I'm taking uh, the sides off and the top and the bottom just ever so slightly so it's a little bit smaller. Now uh, what I used to do is hot glue lace and stuff around there. Like if I wasn't going to decorate the covers with ink and be crazy like I like to be with my acrylic paints, um, you could certainly do that now and then bind the two together. You could do that and it would work. But I decided I didn't want anything uh, lacy or any kind of trim in the middle. What I mean by that is like something placed in the middle between the watercolor paper and the postal box that I just covered. So I would hot glue all around where my hand is on the edges if I wanted a nice decorative edge. But I didn't do that with this book. So what I'm using is just simple house glue that everybody loves and knows from years ago. Elmer's glue, all purpose. It's the best. It's very thick and I knew it would take this paper really well and give me a nice bonded coverage. Usually with like Aileen's glue or some sort of tacky glue, I would have to put this on and then leave something weighted on it, like a heavy book or a weight or something to keep them two, the two together. But Elmer's glue is just like that staple glue that's been here forever. You know, we all know this. By the way, if you put Elmer's glue on your nose and let it dry, my friends think I'm absolutely insane. But let it dry and you peel it off. It's like a one of those Bayori, whatever you call those things, those strips that take blackheads out of your nose. Like this stuff is amazing. Yeah, I use it. Tell my kids to use it. It's cheaper than that stuff and it works so great. Cleans all your pores out. But anyway, that's a whole nother video. <laughs> so back to the book here. So it's so thick that you don't, um, you don't even need to put weights on it. It just kind of instantly grabs on and um, I use the brayer and that's it. I place it aside, let it dry. So okay, now that it's dry and my surface is covered so I'm not totally destroying my mat and I just use dollar store like um, wax paper to go underneath this. It, I find it works the best for covering and protecting my mat underneath you know, my desk or on the top of my desk. So I had these stencils laying around and I'm just using some Dilutions ink and I'm just spraying a bunch of different colors. I picked out a few of them. It's their ink spray. Um, it's by Ranger and again, I'll link everything down there. Totally love this stuff. I love it because I love the bright colors and I love it because it really doesn't clog up my pumps. You know, when you, you buy them or you make your own, sometimes these things clog so easily, but I find these are consistent and they work all the time. I don't have to, you know, stop in the middle of a project and say, I got to clean the tops or the little tubes out inside of it. What a pain in the neck that is. So I reuse these too. I'll put um, liquid watercolor in them or you can water down acrylic paint. I like the watercolor best. Um, it doesn't stick to everything. Obviously you need some sort of watercolor or mixed media paper to really have that get absorbed nicely into the paper. So this wasn't going to be absorbed so much because that paper with the, the uh, notes on was really acting as a little bit of a barrier. So I was basically staining it, hoping some of it would seep through and it doesn't really, but it did, it did take, um, it took some time to dry, but it dried nicely and I'm able to get away with it. You can use acrylic paint on this. It's, it's a, a nice, um, medium to use on top of this paper. So I'm just going to spray here and there. Um, I also, as I spray it and I get the, the template that I'm using all dirty, what I'll do is I'll take a piece of deli paper and I'll flip it on top of the uh, deli paper. So I'll put the deli paper aside and I'll use that. Here you go. Here I'm cleaning it that way. So I flip it onto the deli paper, which is usually always next to me by my side when I'm working. And I'm just creating some interest in some other colors on, on the sheet. And I'll incorporate those throughout my entire book because I like to, I call it cross pollinating and it's taking a little bit of the colors from the outside of the books and putting it and using it on the inside of the book. So I have a whole stack of those always to the side of me. I totally love it. Um, the deli paper I buy at Costco and I can put a link to that so you'll know what it is, but you can get it on Amazon. But yeah, you can find it in your local Costco. I think it was like $9 for this giant huge box. So here's some scrapbook paper that I have and I'm going back to using my um, Liquitex matte medium for this, not my Elmer's glue. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste the papers on the inside cover of my book now. So it's going on top of the watercolor paper. And as you can see, you can see the little holes there that I'll be binding, um, using for, for the holes to go through with my needle. So I'm covering them up with the paper. 
but on the other side I had pierced through earlier remember I showed you and that those holes are going to still be there so I'll flip these over and I'll re-pierce those holes so I can always see them on both sides yeah so covering them up right now but that doesn't mean that um, I won't be able to see them so constantly make sure that if you're doing something like this you can always go back and find your holes um, from the other side and make sure you're piercing them again and again and again just so you don't lose them and if you did lose them you can certainly take your template again and um, you know try to find them but I wouldn't recommend that only because you'd probably be piercing it around the same spot and if it's not exactly in the same spot now your hole might be a little bit messed up and it could kind of weaken your binding so it's just easier to keep track of it as you're going along so here I'm just gluing down. I just ripped with my hands, nothing fancy. I just like the colors. It was like periwinkle purple and it had some greens and the other one had some sort of stamped floral on it that was really pretty. So I went ahead, I'm just um, putting them down very like not really caring too much where they go because I know I'm gonna be coming over this and I'm gonna put inks on it and I'm gonna draw on it, I'm gonna paint on it. This is also going to uh, make this book a lot more stable and more secure. So where that bend was in the, the book, remember I said there was like a natural crease there? It was almost as if um, it wasn't cut through, but it was just like um, a straight line and it would like bend really easy at that particular part. So it really made it not bend at all. This kind of sturdied it up. So here I'm taking that deli paper that I used where I was kind of washing my stencils off onto. And I'm just going to incorporate that here. So now the front's going to coordinate with the um, the first and last, or the back of the book. The back page of the book and the first page of the book. Or not the page, but the, the book itself, the book cover and the back cover, I should say. But I have enough of this stuff laying around that I will incorporate it throughout the entire book. I kind of like that because it makes it look uniform. And I love bright colors. I love really happy journals with inspirational quotes and I think that's what I'm going to be going for this time um, on this particular journey through this book. I want to have really inspirational, sometimes Lent can be kind of dark, I don't know, sometimes that's what I find every year. It's like kind of your soul searching and you're kind of like, um, you know, finding your way and thinking about things and just life in general. And sometimes it's you, you face these little demons in your head, at least I do, that are a little dark and you reflect back on things when you could have been a better person or could have been nicer to somebody. Um, so I want this to be very inspirational. And when I look back on it, you know, next year or even in a month from now, I'll remember, um, you know, how I felt when I make these things. That's kind of what I do is I reflect back and I, as soon as I see the journal page that I made, I remember how I was feeling at that particular time. And sometimes you go through like, you know, dark times in your life or problems and you think this really sucks and it's never going to get better. And then I look back at the journal books and I'm like, wow, I was in a really bad place and look how life turned around. And I'm glad I kind of like stuck through it because I feel really good today, you know? So it's kind of an inspiration for me to keep these and to, to just um, get my feelings out. Very visual person, and I do I do write a lot as well. But it's a good place to um, reflect and really get things out that bother you or things that you may want to get better at um, and put these into your journals. So here I am. I'm just taking my punch, and I'm going to make these just a little bit bigger, um, and they'll fit the grommets in them, and it'll be a nice black kind of like a decorative grommet too. I think it looks nice. So let me just tell you about the thread again because I started to. Um, so yeah, you can take a regular candle, a dollar store candle, it doesn't matter, a junk candle you have laying around your house. Take a nice thicker quality thread and you can just run it along your candle several times to get wax on all sides of that thread. And this just makes it easier to, um, to actually stitch your book and bind it together, okay? Or you can um, purchase thread it's not that expensive I don't remember what I paid um I I don't know I had a I, I can put the link up there I did get a little kit that was just something that I um I had lost one when I moved my art studio from a different part of my house to a much smaller room which has been such an adjustment I had a huge huge room at one time and now I'm in a much smaller room so I'm sure I have it in a box somewhere um so I just repurchased this kit that I think is awesome so I'll link that, like I said. So I'm going ahead now. I had already marked out where all my holes were. Um, 
on these junk mails, but now I'm going ahead and I'm just going to use this punch and make them a little bit bigger. What's good about this particular punch is that you can set your grommets with it and it has two different size holes. Um, it's really, it's really great. I use it all the time and I can see the holes. So it's not like I'm guessing where I'm punching. I can actually see that I'm pretty centered over that tiny little hole that I first marked off. So just take your time. It's a little tedious here, but it's so much fun to put this book together. And it's just so rewarding when you look at the, the end product and you're like, wow, I made this cool book. Um, so I'm using a Japanese stab binding book technique. It's really, really simple. It's basically stitching. So you stitch in and out of the holes, but you also go around the outside of the book or the edge of the book. Um, and it just creates a really secure, tight book. Um, you'd be actually surprised. I mean, these books, if you were to buy a book like this, they could be $45 in some of the stores. So I don't know. I just have $45 I could spend something else on and I had junk mail and Hey, you know what? Let me say, I'll save some money, have fun. I like to create things. And, um, it didn't take that long, much time either. You'd be really surprised. It kind of came together really quickly. Uh, I'm going to say an hour and a half, two hours, maybe tops, but I've done this before. So if you're doing it for the first time, um, you know, it's going to take you longer just because I, I know what I'm doing and I'm just going quicker. So you can figure it out too. It's really, really simple. You just even watch a couple videos on YouTube or just Google Japanese stab binding book techniques and they have pictures that show you much better than what you're really going to see on a video. So let me explain what I'm doing here is I went to the middle of the stack and I'm going to my string. First of all, it's probably an arm's length and a half an arm's length. So what's that like a yard and a half, I'm going to say of string and I'm going to leave a tail and I start at the middle of my book and I start at the second hole. So it's towards the middle of the book. So you have two second holes there actually. So just pick hole number two, either the top or the bottom, whatever you choose. Go halfway in the middle of your book, and that would be where my 20% bed bath is. Now you can see it kind of peeking through. And where that is, I'm going to leave a piece of string hanging there, and that's going to be like my tail. And why I do that is because when I bind the whole book together and I come back and end there, I'm going to end inside that book, and that's where I'm going to tie it off in the middle of the inside of the book. This way you have no ugly ties, you don't see any knots or anything. It's all tied together nice and neatly and it would be hard to kind of figure out where I tied it off. So just make sure you leave enough tail. I leave some probably 13 inches maybe, 14 inches, um, and, and I just tuck it in. So underneath the um, where that 20% coupon is, it's about halfway through. So there's a bunch more pages. So then I go into the, the hole next to it and I match that up with the other holes and I go all the way through back like I just did. And then you go around the outside of the edge. See how I went around the outside there? So I just feed it through. I just go to the next hole and I feed all the papers through. You just got to line it up. Just take your time and push them through. The needle is great for this and the holes are nice and big so I didn't have any struggles. So I come up from that same hole and then you're going to go over to the next hole. I'm just tightening it up. See they were kind of a bit loose. So what I'm doing is just playing with it and just pulling it and making sure they were tight enough um, as I went along. So then I also, as I went along, um, yeah, I use the, the back of the needle too, or, or um, anything that you can slip under there and kind of give it a pull. And see, just like you're tying your shoelaces and you pull one, you see the other ones move. That's what I was doing here to try to figure out, okay, which one do I need to tighten and pull to make this tighter? So see how it goes around the binding of the book. And now I'm going into that third hole. I'm going to go straight through. And when I get to the other end of it, that's when I'm going to take it and go up around the outside edge, back in through that same hole that I'm in now. Okay. So you're going in it twice. So it's so much fun. I love these books. They're so much fun. Um, you can gesso them beforehand while your pages. Um, I, I didn't have time to. And you know what? You can also gesso them as you go. Um, what I tend to do is as I work on other things, I always have gesso left over. 
So I always kind of keep a book near me and I just gesso the pages, even though I might not be working on them, um, as I find them. So here you go. I'm just going to go back over and I'm going to do the outside part now. See how I'm coming up through the same hole? It's just, it just got to work yourself through, through the holes and they're pretty really, they're really well aligned. Um, what I do is I keep every junk mail, I'll pick one corner. So I picked the top left corner and they all eat lined up exactly even. So the top of my book to the left hand corner, they're going to be all the same size. So when you look at the book, like we're looking now at the top, they're all kind of exactly together. And that just helps me um, line things up. Like if something shifted, I know if I put that back to the left top corner and line it up in the corner that I'll find my hole really easily. So it is pretty easy to do this and it's so much fun. So there, I just went around the outside. There's my third one going around the outside. And then I'll just come over and I'll start working on that last one. See how it goes through pretty quickly? So once I get to, um, once I have my last stitch done, what I'll do is I'll find that little tail when I come back through and I'll pull the needle. I won't go through the whole entire book like I've been doing. I'll just go through half of the book to that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon and I will find my way there. I'll make sure I can find it. My little tail will be sticking out and then I just make some ties and uh, tie it off and it's great. You can't even see it. So in this book, I can use a lot of different things. I can use inks. I can use um, acrylic paint. There's so much you could do. You could use gelatos. You can use stamps. You can, um, oh my gosh, stencils. It's like endless, the, the possibilities. And what I like about this too is that not so much in the middle of the book because you're going to have, it gets a little bulky as you open it. But the first couple of pages, if I wanted to do like a whole big landscape layout, I could actually use, you know, two pages to do that. And I can't wait to have those hidden ones come out that fold down like the accordion. Those are so, so cool. Um, what I also like to do is create pockets in my book. And what I do with that is I take some heavy, hard quality, like um, the basal um, cardstock for scrapbooking. And what I'll do is I'll just cut out a square, say, that fits nicely in the book. And I'll, I'll glue down three sides so that one si top side would be open and it becomes like a pocket. And then I'll do like decorative. You could stitch it if you want with uh, a needle and thread or you could sew it um, on a sewing machine if it fit onto your sewing machine. Um, you could do that before you bind the book together too. But you can do things like that when it's not put together. So I think I'm just going to glue it. And then I'll just have a pocket where I can slip different notes and stuff in a kind of keepsakes or whatever. Um, I also use this little plier thing here. Not a pliers. This is just a regular like craft tool. And that helps me just grab the needle. Sometimes I have to pull through and it's, you know, it gets stuck a little bit. But if you can see, I'm constantly going back and just tightening everything up. So you can make adjustments along the way. And you can have it as tight or as loose as you want it. Um, mine's pretty tight. Because I made it so tight, I also decided that I'm going to score right where those grommets are. I just scored down with my bone folder and um, helped make a little crease there. And that's coming up. You'll see what I did there. That just helps me open and close it. And then once I had it all tied together and everything, I did go through and open up page by page. And I used my bone folder and I pushed down. I used my hands first and then I started to use the bone folder where it got just too thick and bulky. And I just helped kind of create like a little bit of a crease there so it would open nicer. So I'm really excited about this book. And I started to work on it because um, Lent, Lent or Ash Wednesday was um, has already passed. So I started on this. I did this before. I'm just getting around to the video now is what I'm saying is I've been so busy that I knew I wanted to get this video up. So I've already um, worked in this book and stuff and I filmed that and I'll be making videos if you're interested in seeing what I've done and created in this book. Yeah, so leave me comments and stuff and let me know what you like. Um, I'm gonna be incorporating some jelly prints in here because I love to do that. Um, 
some nice inspirational quotes that I have written down. Every time I find one, I kind of like save it on my phone and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back and, and do that. Or even sometimes if you read like, um, cause it's Lent, I could read like whatever scripture reading it is that week or something. I could go ahead and read that and then do like a reflection on the scripture reading. There's so many different things you can do in here. Um, you can glue things down. You could glue buttons on there. You could use, um, paper flowers. There's so much you could add to these books. These books can take a beating too. So see how they're stiff? Well, that's because there's, you know, it's handmade and it's, there's no like professional binding kind of edge that has that indentation. So you know what? We'll make it work. So what I'm doing is just taking a ruler and my bone folder and I'm just going down and pressing, 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 and I made a crease and look how much easier it opens. And it'll get better as I open and close it and use it. So also as I'm working on this, and you'll see if you watch the upcoming videos of what I've done to this book, um, I'll use a binder clip from the dollar store and I'll hold the book open as I work. And I do that in my normal Pentelic books anyway. But when the book's pretty much done and it's, it's already been, you know, painted and stuff on, um, it, it opens and closes so easy. It's wonderful. So I went ahead and I scored both sides. This is me scoring the other side now. I just push really, really hard, hard as you can, just to give it a nice thick crease there because you want to get it through to that cardboard and just push it down. So see, it already opens. You're kind of giving it like a hinge. So here I am trying to find the middle of where that bed bath coupon is. And I'm going to go in through my last hole here and I'm going to find where it comes out. So since it was like a weird angle, I couldn't push it through. It wasn't working. I didn't want to break the needle. So what I ended up doing was I put the needle through all through the whole stack and down uh, coming out the back. And then I just took something sharp um, where the bed bath coupon was. And I went ahead and I fished it out with like a needle or something and I pulled it out. I'll show you it's coming up. So I'm just here. I'm just using my hands and pushing down um, on keeping some of those pages open. There's my favorite one, the Jeep one that opens up to like the little surprise. So I had two, two kind of similar ones in there like that. <clears throat> so I can't wait to do those. Those are going to be super cool. So I still gave it a last attempt to try to come through here, but there was 40. If there was a little bit less, it's much easier to um, find that needle over there. But it just, I couldn't get the angle and I really didn't want to break the needle because I will be making a bunch of these books. So I decided to just go straight through, straight all the way down, like I said, and not waste my time figuring it out too much. So I went all the way down and then I just pulled it and fished it out. I left the needle on here in case I was having trouble, I could pull it back through um, easier. So that's why I left it on there. So here I go. I have just a little sharp thing. You could use anything that's sharp. And I found the thread. Once I found it, I knew I had it. Then I took the needle off. And then I'm able to now pull it back through into the middle of this book very easily. And this is where you just <clears throat> simply tie it like a shoelace. I tied it in a nice knot. Just make sure I'm nice and positioned over there and tied it up. So it was really pretty easy and it was good to go. So as I work on other projects, I just stamp and stuff. I put acrylic paint, whatever I have. I don't waste anything. I slap it into these pages. So um, sometimes as I'm working, I'll come across this blob of purple or blob of blue. And that's that's because I just let something dry in there. So when, if you watch the videos that are coming up, um, I'll try to work on those this week sometime. I have several videos that are just like hanging out here ready to be um, pieced together and edited and, you know, talked over and um, all that fun stuff. That takes so long. I'd much rather be creating. Um, I do the voiceovers at late at night because I have three birds and I think they're in the other room and I, I swear the minute I talk they're like all chirping and chirping and chirping and one's only five weeks old. He's a baby parrot and he's just discovered he has a voice. He's been so super quiet and I kept saying to him, I know you know you have a voice in there and boy, I think he's really finding it. So the covers are all on them. It's like 11 o'clock at night. It's actually 1130 and my kids are quiet and my husband's passed out sound asleep and the birds have covers on them and that's when I do my voice talkings because otherwise you'd hear chirping through the entire things. Some of my early videos I'm like oh my god I actually posted that and it's just because I had no choice. Um, 
these birds were up and that's when I realized let me just cover them up and, and trick them just like you do little kids with those room darkening shades I trick my birds so here I had this really cool um, stencil but I didn't care that it, you couldn't see like that the time I knew I'd be covering it up with other things I just liked the, the interest of the bright blue um, I thought it'd be cool if one of them actually came through that you could actually see it was a clock so here again, I'm using a piece of scrap uh, deli paper and I'm just trying to get as much as that design off onto that paper because I'm going to use it somewhere along the line. This dried so super fast. If you can see, it's not even coming off that stencil. I was like shocked at how fast this actually dried. Um, this was a better high quality uh, acrylic paint that I used that blue. Usually if I use like the craft paint, like Folk Art or AC Moore brand, it comes completely off and I don't have to even clean the stencils. So I'm just using some white and I use makeup sponges from the dollar store and I rewash them just when I wash my brushes and I've had them forever. Um, they do get stained maybe the color of what you're using. So I try to like use the white with the white, you know, the cleaner one and the blue will go with the blue one. Um, I just like keep using them over and over again. These things last like forever and they were a dollar. I think there's like 30 in the pack. So I have a logo that I created. It's because I love paper dolls and stuff like that and painting and inking and color pencil. I love everything. And painting, uh, you know, oils, acrylic. I did come up with a business logo that I've been using. My kids don't really like it. They say I look green like a witch, but, you know, whatever. Kids are kids. Um, I just liked it because it reminded me of, like, the old paper dolls or something. So I, that's what I used as my business logo. And I decided to put that on there because I'm always working on my business and I do commissions for a living. I That's what I do. This stuff here I do for fun just to kind of let my hair down and um, just remember why I'm an artist in the first place, why I love to craft and paint and all that fun stuff. But yeah, I do commissions. Take a look at my website if you want to see some of my work. Um, I do a lot of portraits. I do a lot of house portraits for realtors. And um, so yeah, so things like this, I just do because I can be free and not have to worry about things looking spot on and having them have to look like anything particular. So yeah, I decided to use my business logo, which I, I love. I still love. It kind of reminds me of, I have a crown and I have like a magic wand and I have my kids' names on it and, um, it's just a lot of fun for me. So I had this really cool flower stencil. I'm mixing right on the the plate here. I use just foam plates again from the dollar store as my palette because they're easy to throw out. I don't stress about saving paint because I don't use that much on them. I don't waste anything. Um, so I'm just dipping it in some pink and some whites and seeing what happens. So I like that there's a lot going on here, but I wanted like a touch of black and this was supposed to stick down here. This was like some Martha Stewart stencil thing that I got in the clearance section. Totally didn't stick. Peeled up, made a blah big blop on my paper, my cover, no less. But you know what? I really don't stress about anything. I just keep going and I changed what I was going to do flowers or something with stems, but totally didn't work. But I was like, oh, that was kind of an interesting, kind of looks like a weird thing. I'll just use this elephant thing here. Uh, I just stuck with the black because I wanted it to pop out. No rhyme or reason, just thought it was a cool stamp that I had. I hadn't used it yet. You can tell it's pretty new. Um, but I thought it would look really cool with the black. So I went right into my logo here and uh, I liked the way it looked and I kept going on and I added some black accents throughout. So I really just worked on my front cover. I'll do the front cover, the inside cover. Um, I'll do the back cover. Every square inch of my journals are covered and I love that. There's not like a speck of anywhere that did not have some paint on it. So like I said earlier, this is where I like to play and I like to experiment because sometimes I'll go to Michael's or AC Moore and I'll find like some weird product that I've never used, like maybe stuff for stenciling on the walls or like something with a sparkle in it or something that didn't quite make it out in the craft world and nobody bought. Um, and I'll purchase that stuff for sprays. I don't even know. Anything that's cheap that I can use as like paint. Um, I also use like dollar store, um, eyeshadow. I buy a whole bunch of it. They're probably like looking at me like, where, where do you go? Because where do you go out? And I never have makeup on. So it's kind of funny that they're probably looking at my face and going like this woman's nuts. Um, but yeah, I, I mix it into my paints. You'll see me doing that a lot or, um, I'll 
and put the wet paint down and then I'll sprinkle it on top of it. And it just adds a lot of cool interests and different sparkles and colors and stuff like that. So I'm always testing out different things in these books. So I really love these books when I go back and I look at them. Um, they just, they make me happy. And um, I just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I like quotes. I like inspirational things. It just makes me feel good. And it, this gives me time away to just be by myself. I also uh, am not e eating. I'm sitting here. I would be, I think if I didn't have art, I would be, you know, 4,000 pounds sitting on my couch and not able to even sit at my art desk because I, thank God, I have something to do with my hands or I'd be eating popcorn or something, ice cream. Um, so here I'm using some gold, um, some spray that was clogged. I think this is by Heidi Swap. It was just like a beautiful color and I love the whole idea about these sprays, but let's face it, the, the flipping thing clogs all the time. So I end up using it like this. I just... I want to use it up because I have a small art room now and I don't have room for all this stuff that I have. Um, when I first like got into it, when I started making money on my own, because uh, I've been doing art forever, um, I didn't want to use any of my products. I'm like, oh no, and I want it on my shelf. I want to look at it and I just want to see it there. And then I don't know. I was like, what the heck? It's going to do it on the shelf. I got to use this stuff. So yeah, I like to use everything I, I buy. I use all my products. I mix and match everything. Um, very carefree, very, can't make mistakes. You know what? If it's ugly, so what? If you really hate it, gesso over it. You can gesso over anything or just stamp over it. Keep going over and over it. This is so many layers. Like you remember when I first started, it was actually that paper that had the, um, the writing and the, uh, the musical notes on it. Now, like I said, you can see it in person, but you can't see it at all here because I kept layering and layering and layering it. Then I decided, which I don't know, I lost the footage. I wrote um, my rubbish art journal and then totally love these pens. Like if you have not used these pens, and again, I'm linking this down below. I do buy them on Amazon because I cannot get them. Sometimes uh, they're just shipped from Japan. Um, and I, I totally know. Uh, I'm obsessed with them. They're called Posca pens. I tell everybody I know about them. I just bought my girlfriend, Dina, uh, a whole bunch of them. She wanted to try them and she asked me to purchase them for her. So I, I hope she loves them. I haven't heard back from her, but she's probably uh, in her art studio Posca penning away, I'm sure. So these are really great. They're acrylic paint in a pen, but they're not like the ones you buy here. They're not like your Sharpie paint pens. I, I don't know. I can't read them because they're Japanese writing on the side of them. So I can't really even tell you anything too much about them. I should probably Google it and see if I can figure it out. But they are like a must have in any art room or art journalists should have this. They write over everything. I mean, this was thickly covered with inks and usually all that would bleed through and nothing. And it's just, I have every color that they make, but I started out buying the black and the um, white first. I want to say that three white pens were something like $7.99. They last me. They, I, it's, they're, I just, I can't say enough about them. They're amazing. You, you have to try them. That's the, I'm telling you not to buy anything. And then I'm telling you to go buy things. So yeah, you have to have Posca pens. They're, they're the best. So that's the only thing I'm going to tell you to go out and buy. Everything else you use it in your room, whatever. Find anything around the house that you can incorporate and make your, your journals with. So before I end this here, I just want to say thanks for watching. I hope you like my videos. I try to bring you a bunch of different things that I love to do. I know I bounce around from colored pencil to acrylics to these journals. I just am passionate about so much when it comes to art. I do not just do one thing, so it's really hard. I consider myself like a really true art hoarder, and I wish I could just like tone in on one thing, but I just love it all. I have a big, broad spectrum spectrum of things that I love and things I can bring and show you how to do or how I do them. Um, there's no right or wrong way. This is just how I do them. So if you see somebody else doing something differently, you know, that's what works for them. So, it, and it might work differently for you. So by all means, I'm just telling you and encouraging you to create whatever's inside you wanting and needing to get out onto paper or a canvas. Do what makes you happy. You know, I'm not Picasso. I'm not making a billion dollars on any of my paintings. I do sell my commissioned work. I am making a living full time at home. I'm blessed to be able to do that. Um, but when you're having fun, who cares? Who cares if it's ugly? Who cares if the colors don't go together? 
are, you're happy and you're creating, you're doing something you love, it's something keeping your, your hands out of your popcorn bag like me, or, you know, uh, you can watch TV with doing things like this. It's just mindless. It kind of takes you away from all the craziness this world has to offer these days. It roots me and it grounds me. So I hope that's what I hope that my videos are inspiring you to, to find is just that your inner self and that creative self and your unique, genuine self. So, um, yeah, I hope you have a great time, whatever you're creating. So before I end, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear comments of what you would like to see more of or what you don't like me talking about or doing. I mean, that's how I'm going to learn and grow too. I don't know what people, it's not like I can talk to people and I know what people want. You can find me on my Facebook. I have a Facebook um, business page. You can send me messages there. You can send message me email. Um, there's a lot of ways to get in touch with me. You know, send me a friend's request. I don't care. Um, I'd like to keep in touch with all artists. That's how I learn and grow and learn different new things. Um, but you can leave a comment below here. If you'd like to check out my personal work, just go onto my website um, or Facebook. I teach a lot of paint and sip classes around New York. So you're going to see a lot of those things. Um, but you'll see a lot of my personal work too. I have a billion animals in my house, so I'm always painting animals and people. And I'm just like one of those happy-go-lucky artists. And I hope that that comes through in my videos. And I hope that, you know, you're inspired in some way to go make your own rubbish art journal today. And to maybe document. It doesn't have to be Lent. You don't have to be Catholic. Just document something. Document your life or your children's lives. These are great books for doing, like, your kid's first year or anything. Just, you know, think outside the box. Be creative. Make them your own. And that's what I encourage you to do. So I really thank you so much for watching. Um, Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and yeah, let me know what you want and let me, um, you know, give me ideas too. I'd love to have you inspire me and tell me, oh, you know, why don't you try this or why don't you do that? Or I made a rubbish journal too and instead of doing it this way, I did it this way. I mean, that's to me what it's about, just human nature. I think we should all share with each other and help each other learn and grow and, and become better and to just be there for each other because I, I find in the world today there's just not enough of that. And and if you look close, you do find it. You find the good in anything. And I see how communities come together after horrible things. And that's when you see, like, the best of people. And it's a shame that you have to have a horrible thing happen. So, um, you know, let's try to help each other. Let's try to inspire each other and to help each other create and learn from each other and all that good fun stuff. So I hope I'm not talking too much. I know I talk fast. Everybody yells at me. Um, but thanks again for watching my junk journal and I hope you like my new introductory. I use um, a Grateful Dead song that I totally love and uh, I know I hope I don't get in trouble for using it. I worry with copyright issues honestly but I've seen so many Grateful Dead shows back in the day um, when I was a teenager that, um, we were allowed to videotape them and to tape them because the, the Grateful Dead had no copyright laws or issues. They didn't care. They wanted you to share their music. So that's why I chose it. I chose it because it's also, um, very colorful introductory where I had the paint kind of like spinning around and dripping off of my logo. And I, uh, decided to use that one. So it's the first time I'm using it in this particular video. I don't believe I violated any copyright laws with them. I hope I did not. I hope I didn't offend anybody. Um, so yeah, so I had some of the Grateful Dead to start you into my artwork. And um, I hope you get a true sense of who I am as a person and as an artist uh, and a busy mom of four. So, and, and I should say an animal mom too. I have a lot of animals here. So we have um, a lot going on. It's a busy house and I know it's late now and uh, they're really being quiet, which is just so wonderful. And if, as soon as I stop talking, I'm going to probably fall asleep. So have a great day, everybody. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please try these art journals. Please leave me a comment. Um, if you have any questions about the book binding or any materials that I've used here, like I'm not going to give you names of these stencils. I don't believe in that. Like I see some people list everything. I don't believe in that. Use what you have. Make your own stencil. Uh, so I do not list things like that, but I will list products and where I can, you can find the, the thread, you know, that has the wax on it or anything else like that, like the Liquitex matte medium, things like that, I'll tell you, but um, use what you have, folks. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm going to end here now, but I'm going to end with our newest little guy. 
Um, he is a four or five week old parrot. We were going to call him Picasso and then I was going to call him Crayola because I needed him to be very artistic. He, I, he's going to be living in my art room with me. So we ended up naming him Skittles and because he's just so darn cute he, and he's so sweet and he's so colorful. Perfect for my art room. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye now.